Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and with Guns N' Roses hitting the road uh, again as part of the Not In This Lifetime Tour and, and with them playing Slither at their first show in Berlin, Germany, I thought why not take a closer look at the song Slither and talk about the true story behind the song as well as talking about the music video as well. So Slither was a song that appeared on Velvet Revolver's first album called Contraband and it was the first single released from the band as well. Now the riff from Slither of course was something that Slash had come up with and when he showed it to the band they really didn't show that much interest in it. He kind of had to force it on them before they finally wrote it uh, as a song. So here's what Slash had to say about writing the riff to Slither and presenting it to the band. Yeah, I remember distinctly writing that because that was, that was a riff that I came up with in person one day. And I was like, I really felt like I had stumbled on, on something very cool. This was during the vocalist audition process that lasted like 10 months so everybody was pretty fried by the end of the day and I'd come up with this thing and nobody wanted to work on it and when we were when I you know first was like introducing that to the band I was like this is great yeah like, yeah 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 so I had to come back and and you know as is the case that's one of the things with Velvet Revolver you got to deal with trying to force material through you know um, so that was one of the songs that I had to force through and and uh, when Scott came into the band, he identified with it right, right away, and then all of a sudden it came together. It probably would have been shelved and might have shown up on my solo record. The, the, the Velvet Revolver process, there was just never a real synergy. And so, so a lot of stuff, there was a lot of roller coaster rides of, 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 of dynamics as far as like the actual musical approach. It got to be very frustrating and a lot of really good material ended up on the editing room floor, so to speak. And so, so I finally got to that point after the last record that we did, which is actually a cool record, but it just didn't, uh, with the combination of working with Brendan O'Brien and Scott, and it just ended up not sounding as heavy or as aggressive as what I would have probably wanted it to sound like. So in 2014, Scott Weiland was interviewed by songfacts.com, and he was asked about the meaning behind the song Slither. He said that song, what was that song about? He said just got done performing it, the lyrics are about a relationship. When you look, you see right through me, cut the rope, fell to my knees, born and broken every single time. It's just feeling not right in a situation. Even Dave Kushner, the band's rhythm guitarist, did an interview with musicradar.com back in 2010 and he was talking a bit about Slither and at that point it had been voted uh, the second place spot in Total Guitars readers uh, poll for the 50 greatest uh, modern riffs so basically he talked about how the song had a really difficult birth and how you made the riff stand out to the crowd so he, he was asked by the interviewer how does it feel to have Slither voted the second best riff of the decade he said it's great when I was a kid and even up until now I would read guitar magazines to get information on gear and my favorite players so to be on the other side of that is amazing he was also asked about how he came up with Slither, how the band came up with Slither. He said, I remember Slash coming in with a riff before Scott Wallen was ever in the band. When Scott came in, he picked out different things that he gravitated towards. First he came in and did Set Me Free. That was the first song we ever wrote with him. The next batch of songs were Slither, Fall to Pieces, and Big Machine. So they were the second, third, and fourth songs that Scott ever put vocals on. I remember Slither as an instrumental and being so many different versions of it for some reason. The original riff never changed, but the arrangement changed more than any other song I can remember in the band. We labored a lot over the arrangement, and when we recorded it, we labored a lot over the tempo. At one point, Matt kept changing the tempo by 1 BPM faster or 2 BPM slower to the point where everyone was frustrated with each other and fighting amongst ourselves because it just didn't sound right. It's funny that it came out to be the favorite riff because it was a song that was really an albatross at a certain point. I guess we did something right. So he was also asked during the interview who played what during the recording. He said, well, the whole record is me on one side and Slash on the other, the same way Appetite for Destruction was done. At the beginning, Slash is playing the chugging part and I'm playing the octaves and the melody thing. In all the verses, we're playing it me on one side and him on the other. In the chorus, I'm playing the big chords and he's playing the octave higher. I'm making all the weird noises and delays in the intro as well, and that kind of sw a sweet delay thing that happens in the break. I think those little things make the song really cool besides the main riff. 
He was also asked about why people love Slither so much. He said it's obviously a special riff, there's something just about it. It's hard to write an album with 14 singles on it, but sometimes magic happens and it's just right. And there's, there's one song that is obviously the first single, and that was Slither on the record. As a writer, you experience certain times where you write something and you're like, wow, this is there's really something special here. I think that that song we just knew as soon as we heard it. The song has also been performed live on a number of TV shows, so when Velvet Revolver is promoting Contraband, they went on a number of TV shows. They played it on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno back in 2004. They played it on David Letterman's show, and uh, they even went on Howard Stern's radio show and did an interview, and they played an acoustic version of the song, which I've linked to down below in the description box. I've also linked the other performances as well. And of course, some of the other notable performances include uh, Slash playing it with Miles Kennedy while on tour with the Conspirators, as well as Guns N' Roses playing it as part of the Not In This Lifetime tour uh, while they're in Europe. The song performed quite well on the Billboard music charts as well, so on the Billboard Hot 100 it reached number 56, while on the Hot Mainstream Rock tracks and Hot Modern Rock tracks it reached number 1, while on the UK and Ireland it was also in the Top 100 singles charts as well. So talking now about the a more success about the song, it won they, the band won a Grammy Award in 2005 for Best Hard Rock Performance, and interestingly enough, it was the first time that the members of Guns N' Roses, or at least some of the members of Guns N' Roses, had ever won a Grammy Award, because previously the Guns N' Roses had never won a Grammy Award. Now let's talk a bit about the music video. So the video was filmed in Prague in the Czech Republic and Los Angeles and it starts with the band members playing their instruments inside a tunnel while a woman is driving a car seeking for the basically trying to get down to that tunnel. So as the song continues people become much more aggressive and the underground concert reaches a peak as the band members play the song. Often in the video Scott Wallen is seen standing before a wall made of human skulls. So here is the, um, the behind the scenes video of them making the actual song. And just before we wrap up the video, some other notable appearances about the song is that Weird Al sampled a part of Slither as part of his Pokerama on the album Straight Outta uh, Linwood. And then the song was used in the Victoria's Secret advertising campaign in 2007. It was also included in the video game Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock as it was available as a downloadable song uh, that came out after the game was shortly released. So without further ado guys, here's the behind the scenes video of this song. And we make a really, really big sound. Imagine I get in the same room for the first time since the end of the guns thing ran out. We just had Matt come down and, and he played with us and it was, that, it was that thing. Obviously I'm the unknown guy. Who is that guy? Dave was a guy he's known since junior high school who was playing in my band Loaded. I was playing in a band with Duff. I walked in the room and I started making all these kooky noises and he'd be like, oh dude, do some more of that. There Now we have four guys, we are chemistry. So we have Scott Weiland, one of the greatest rock and roll front man of all time. What we have is the desire to create something altogether new, to really push the envelope. Scott came in the room and sang, and there it was. That thing, and, and I, that, like that, that lightning struck. Basically, we were shooting our first video. We're in Prague right now, getting ready to do driving shots, driving around town, looking for the entrance to the party. We have two steering wheels because Cat <gasps> cannot drive a clutch. It's looking good. It seems that uh, we're finding some good locations and the background looks amazing. The castles are just beautiful. And roll camera. Things are going pretty good, a little delayed, but we can't complain. The band is here, ready to go. First setup today is we're waiting for the band, which is a common starting point on all videos. Energy up, everybody. Roll camera, roll playback. We're shooting the video. And people watch the video, and it's three minutes and 30 seconds long, and they go, like, wow, what a nice video. But a lot goes into making these videos. trailers and, you know, 500 extras. And then there's like, you know, there's 50 people running around. You don't know exactly what they do. <laughs> I hope you know you pulled me out of watching Staying Alive. I hope I don't get lost. It's a good indication of where we're going. Okay, wait, we're here. A girl's going to be dancing in this bubble. It's going to be a very short girl. So the crowd's going to be all around us. Yeah, and they'll be all the way there. It's a rock stage. I think this is great though. This is exactly how we want the gigs to be. Except for maybe without all the brick. We got a bunch of different treatments in and, and Kevin Kerslake's, his was the one we always like. This is the one here. 
We're trying to recreate a phenomenon that happens in Paris, which is the catacomb parties, which happen deep, deep, deep underground. I think that Kevin is the perfect director to capture that. He looks at it as the counterpart to uh, the music and looks at it as an art form. Kevin comes from that same school. He's been around a long time. He's been making videos a long time, and he's also a true artist. Man, this is awesome. It's just like the photographs. This would make a great, like, out of the way, like some gig that only two people knew about and was really down. This is the lyric sheet for the song, and they break it down so that as we go through the day, we know where we're starting. We obviously aren't going to start from the top the whole time. We'll start, we'll break it out in pieces, and we'll go through chorus to chorus. It's really important, I think, not only to talk about what Kevin's ideas are and his visions and stuff like that, but how important it is to have a team behind you that really understands you and can almost read your mind and sort of see what you see. Uh, it's good so far. It's hot down there, man. Good looking crowd. Pretty girls. I have no idea who these guys are. It all baffles me. <laughs> How's it going, girls? How's the video going? It's going wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I usually hate making videos. Somewhere along the line, they came up with the video. I prefer a live concert. You know, you get up there and you really do. This is a bunch of... Nando, we have to talk. Just remember all the, the, the hurry up and wait. Stop talking and start listening. We're not out to combine um, the sounds of either bands. We wanted to create something that we wanted to hear. This band's definitely not about looking back. In fact, that all five of us got together was completely just inspired by chance. It was sort of fell into each other's laps. And so once we all uh, accumulated all our different talents and stuff, it just became something very new. The concept of uh, the catacombs in Paris. So we built a set. We look like we're underground in the catacombs. We feel like we've been a bit underground, you know, really. <laughs> So, I mean, it's kind of a cool concept for all of us, sort of churning from below. The art department was absolutely genius. So, we're in the catacombs. We're finding our way down into the subterranean catacombs of Paris. Yeah, there's these tunnels, and they're all lined with skulls and femurs that built some 400 years ago. And this is spooky. Let's <laughs> get out of here. It's actually just styrofoam. <laughs> Those tunnels were built by Trey, the art director, and his team of mad painters and scientists. The whole thing's basically made of foam, and it's made of real skulls, real bones, and we mold it, shape it, then we make multiple panels of it, put it all together, paint it. They have been working diligently, and those sets look exactly like those reference pictures that we've seen from those tunnels. I mean, it's truly amazing. Amazing job. You guys are good. See, we hire the best here. Revolver Incorporated. And they're going to actually go to the catacombs and film that. It would have been too expensive for the whole band to go. We could just we could say we're in Paris. Man. They will crawl through the depths of all this to see us, man. They must be big fans in rock and roll. We've been shooting mostly the extras and our lead girl walking through the catacombs. It's been really amazing, especially the way that uh, Jonathan Sells, the DP, has lit the, the piece. He's using a lot of practical lighting, using the lights on top of the minor caps to illuminate the set, so to give it a more realistic feel. It's got to feel real. And I know that that's Kevin's forte when it comes to things like that. Ready, boys? Ready. through these catacombs and I'm kind of scared, kind of don't know really where I'm at and I'm looking for this party so I'm excited at the same time and then I find this little tunnel and I crawl through and then there's a light at the end of the tunnel and I don't know where I'm going but hopefully I'll know in the next hour or so. <laughs> cool, cut, moving on. Michael production, we're moving over to the other set. You can see, yeah, come through here. She will come climbing down that ladder right there as if she's entering this labyrinth, and she'll walk through here and then enter into the maze. That's pretty dangerous up there, man. Here we go, guys. And pretty sexy. I'm the water beta. The comes in Paris. An archway which reads, stop. Here begins the empire of death. Okay, camera goes up. This is picture, guys. Plan to get a shot. It's not wild in here. So we got really lucky today. We got to have Scott come back and shoot some performance in the ostuary, ostuary, the skull room, basically. <laughs> It's amazing.
amazing and really beautiful and frightening and haunting uh, the way that it looks and the way that he performs in there. Artists like him who are like truly solid performers, they almost turn into a different person. But all you need to do is basically point the camera in his general direction and you're going to win, I think. And I kind of steal a lot of my movement from things that I've seen, things like Cirque du Soleil and yoga, really sort of abstract things. A lot of that sort of uh, serpentine movement. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen a human snake before, but you, you certainly have witnessed it in the last couple of days. It's not really all that traditional, but uh, I guess my body just moves that way. It's just performance art, really. Eight months. Eight, nine months. We had, we had thousands of CDs come in. We'd play it. Be like, that guy's awful. Save the CD. Next one. Psh, like this little conveyor belt. Some days for four hours in a row, not even playing. Scott came in, we gave him a piece of music out of the 50 or 60 songs we had. We came in the room and sang, and there it was. We've all been around the same block. We've all sort of, uh, you know, traveled up the same same road. It was like we got on stage together and it just exploded. And that was that was like, okay, we're going to do this, you know. But, it's you such know? an electric thing that happens when all five guys have this, this, this common bond, this desire to do something. It just gives everybody this energy. It doesn't matter how old you are. Man. It's cool. Um, sort of did what I do on stage, really. Just sort of pretended that the band was there. Every time I make a video, I'm just more certain uh, that I could never be an actor. So yeah, yesterday, as usual, there's always some sort of drama or, you know, problems on the set. I think in the end, look, it always works out. And knowing how great Kevin is and how spot on this band is, they're going to pretty much nail it every single time. That allowed us yesterday to have those little issues and still make our day. I mean, you just take a look at those dailies, it's like we're ultimately going to be in the in an amazing shape. My feet are feeling me. <laughs> it's like 10 minutes till 10 12. 12. I've been here since 12. But you know, I'm not complaining. It's well worth it. I'm good. still going strong. I'm ready to get out of these fishnets. Get in late. They need one more solo shot of me for some reason. I guess my ears are some good looks and need some more out. This is the last take. It better be the last shot because I'm done. <laughs> and me and Stephanie are going to Las Vegas. <laughs> That's a wrap. So that's it. That's the end of the video. It's been a great couple days, and uh, I'm beat. I'm gonna go home and crash, but I hope everybody likes the video. It was definitely fun making it. It was a gas. So. Velvet Revolver's first video, so there you have it. Ciao.